do it. Well, pastor, how come it ain't happening? Because your faith, remember the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. How many want your faith to be increased? And you know when they said that, he said, how many times should I forgive my brother? 70 times seven. Is that what it said? They said, oh, I need faith for this. How many know it takes, you know why marriages are falling apart? People ain't got no faith anymore. Whew, man. But he wants you to have faith. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Now that, that was... That was just a little bit of an introductory. You might want to turn this down a little bit, Michael. Yesterday when I preached, it was popping. We don't want the popping except for the Holy Ghost. We want the Holy Spirit to grip you. You, you. you need to understand, don't record yet. You got to understand, you're not fighting flesh and blood here. People offend you. People get you upset. People irritate you. People rub you the wrong way. Just get your shoot of faith up. But if, what if you got a little insy bitsy shield? Well, let's get that faith to where, you know, the, the, the shields of the Roman soldiers, it covered the whole body from, it wasn't just a little thing, it was, it covered you from head to toe. That's where we need to go. We need to have such a shield of faith to where no fiery dart of the wicked one can get through. We're laughing at the circumstances, we're laughing at the sickness. We're laughing at the problems. We're laughing at them. The Bible says he'll fill your mouth with laughter. He said he'll cause you to laugh at your calamities. Say ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. How come you're happy, Pastor Mike? The devil is defeated. He's under my feet. How do I know if I'm operating in faith? You see, I want to really preach this. How, how do you know if you're operating in faith? Because you will always exalt Christ. How do you know if you're operating in unbelief? You will always exalt the problem. That's the difference. Well, I'm going to tell them to exalt Christ. You can't do it. It's not in their heart. You can't, you can't. That's like telling them to eat a bowl of soup and there's no soup in the bowl. Well, just be, make believe that the bowl is full of soup. No, man. Either you have it or you don't. And if you, that's like, I'm going to try to act smart. How many of you know that don't work? How many know that you can have a brain though and not use it? How many know you got to have faith or you wouldn't have been born again, but a lot of people ain't using what they got. If you don't use your muscles, you lose them. And the less you, you know, it's, it's a proven fact. People who are, if you can take a perfectly healthy person, lay them in a the hospital bed for two weeks, and at the end of two weeks, they'll have pneumonia, their muscles will almost be all be gone, and they will be sick to the point of death because they laid in their bed. You know how many people are laying in a bed of self-pity? I'm preaching good whether you know it or not. Amen. Now, go ahead and begin to record. Let's go ahead and open our Bibles up this morning to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. You can start that countdown clock if you want to. Oh, Romans 8. All, all the book, all the Bible, all the promises, all the blessings, all the provisions are so amazing. And every one of them are given to you that you might become partakers of the divine nature. Don't let sin have dominion over you any longer. I'm telling you, we can live victorious, but we need some examples. How many would say amen? amen? You know, a pint of example is worth more than a gallon of advice. So, Pastor Mike, I have to be an example for you. I got to be an illustration. I got to show you what God can do when a person or a man or a woman completely gives their heart over to Christ. I can't tell other people to do it and then say, do what I tell you, but don't do what I do. But Christ made you to overcome. And, and, and Romans chapter 8, I just was talking about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin. What is the law of sin? It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, that means that which is against the nature and the will of God, the character of God, it produces sin, which is disobedience. And if you keep walking in that disobedience, I don't care if you speak in tongues. I don't care if you're born again. I don't care if you made a confession to Christ. If you keep walking in that spirit of disobedience, it will produce death. And it is not just physical death. 
It, yes, your joy will die, your peace will die, your love will die, your victory will die, it will die, but you will be cut off from God when it's completed. That's what it's all designed for. And so it tells us that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, do you know how the law of the spirit of life works? It works by faith. Do you know how Christ dwells in your heart? He dwells in your heart by faith. Do you know how you walk in Christ? You do it by faith. But you notice what it says here in verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Faith opens your eyes up to the realm of the spirit where all things are possible and you begin to say, I can overcome anything the devil throws at me. Anything the devil throws at me because God hasn't given me a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind. How many know people today don't have sound minds? They're unreasonable. They're fierce. They're despisers. They're backbiters. They're gossipers. They walk around depressed all the time. I know what I'm talking about. But look what it goes on to say here. In verse 15, let's jump down to verse 15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, Paul said the same thing in Galatians in chapter 4. We'll look there in a little bit. But I cry, Abba, Father, or Daddy God, or really what it's saying is, Father, your will be done. Father, like Jesus at 12 years old, I must be about my father's business. That's the spirit of faith talking. I must be about my father's business. I've got to do his will. I, time is running out. I've got to seek his face. It's faith that causes you to seek God. Unbelief causes you to run away from God. Notice what it goes on to say here. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. What do you mean? We're only heirs if we suffer with him? No, what it's saying here, you cannot partake of God if you do not suffer. Remember Paul said that I might know him, the power of his resurrection and fellowship with his suffering. You know, the suffering is talking about there is not sickness and disease. It is the suffering that comes because of obedience. He says he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He, when he, he was reviled, he reviled not. When he was despised, he did not respond. See, it takes faith to walk in that realm where you say, I don't care what the devil does to me. I don't care what people do to me. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they say to me. I don't care. I don't care. You can spit on me. You can slap me. You can crucify me. I don't care. You're not getting me out of love. You're not getting me out of faith. You're not, you're not taking my joy. You're not taking my peace. You're not taking my hope. You're not taking it in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. I was laying in bed last year, and I heard the audible voice of God. To me, it was audible. And you say, well, why does God reveal himself to you, Pastor Mike, and not to others? He wants to reveal himself to everybody. I will make this statement, which I know it's a shocker, but the Lord spoke to me. He said, time, son, it's time to let it all out. Tell the truth. If they can handle it, then they will. If they can't, then I'll have to deal with them. But when God began to speak through Jesus and John 14, 15, 16, and 17. He had 11 disciples there. His other disciple, Judas, was not there, and he did not share any secrets with Judas. He didn't give Judas any revelation of who he was. Do you know why? Because he was a thief. He was dipping into the money bag and stealing from God. I'm not talking about tithe. I am talking about your life. If you don't give to God what he deserves, you are a thief and God cannot give you revelation. It will include your finances, but it talks about your time. It talks about everything. You know what I said to the Lord? I said, Father, I know better. How many of you ever, when you ever said to a grown up teenager, stop acting like a child? Why? Because they knew better. How many of you ever done things since you've been saved that you knew better and you still did it? You knew better, still did it. And so if you're a thief, God can't reveal his heart to you. He ain't going to give you revelation knowledge. I need revelation because grace comes at the revelation of Jesus Christ. But see, when man committed sin in the garden, his eyes of faith were shut. And his eyes of unbelief were opened. 
I don't want to have, you know what? My eyes of faith were opened up on February 18th, 1975. But there's some, have you ever, you know, my son Michael, sometimes he concerns me. He walks around, his eyes will be open, and then he'll walk around with his eyes closed. And then he all, I said, I hope you don't drive like that, boy. And there's a lot of people that are living in this life, and their spiritual eyes of faith are shut. You need to let God open up your eyes of faith. You need to see Christ high and lifted up. You need to see that he overcame principalities and powers. You need to see that every knee must bow at the mention of his name. You must see that cancer cannot come, that it cannot stay, that arthritis cannot live in your body any longer. God, open up people's eyes. Let a spirit of faith come upon us once again. Man, I can't just stay away from the subject of faith. We need it, man, and you can have it. Tell somebody, I need it, I want it, and I can have it. Woo! And faith is one way that faith comes, I'll throw it, is it's contagious. I hope you catch a case of faith this morning. I hope faith gets on you and you rise up and you finally put that rotten, no good, low down, yellow belly snake, that liar, that serpent under your feet. And you stomp on him. Go ahead, stomp on him where you're sitting. Praise the Lord. Shh. Pastor Mike, I just don't know. I just don't believe. Well, I'm a believer. It says, so if you're walking in the revelation of your inheritance, you will suffer with Christ that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us for the expectation, the, the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, if we got time, we could go into this. All the creation right now is groaning and travailing because they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, I, when I say sons of God, I'm not talking about a little child. I'm not talking about little babies. We're talking about mature sons. We're talking about growing up sons. We're talking about people who have become mature in the things of the Spirit and they're no longer children in their understanding. They've got a hold of the vision, the purpose, the plan. They've got a hold of the mission. They, they see what God wants to do and they, 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 they are going for it. And they're not making excuses any longer for the carnality, for the fleshliness, for the failures of this life. How many know, have you ever seen a little child? They make excuses for everything. We've got a lot of children that, that, that they're big in body, they're old in age, but they're, they're, I'm not talking about even spiritually immature, they're mentally immature. You know how many grown-ups today, I deal with men all the time, I deal with men that are much older than me. I rent rooms out to men, and you cannot imagine the immaturity in this generation. Immaturity where they not, will not accept responsibility for their own lives. Still blaming their mom, still blaming their dad, still blaming society, still blaming different races. And they're not mature even in the flesh, let alone in the spirit. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Say, Lord, I want to grow up. Are you getting anything this morning? It's not a message of condemnation. Didn't you ever say to your child, it's time to grow up. It's time to become responsible. It's time to become mature. It's time to take accountability. It's time. It's time. Now it's time to grow up. It's time to stop throwing hissy fits. It's time to, 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 to act like, like you've lost your mind. Come on, man. We've all done it. We've, I'll throw a temper tantrum. And that way I'll get what I want. Now I know we don't have nobody here like that, but that's for all of those of you watching. We've got a congregation of nothing but absolute 100% mature men and women who are obsessed and possessed and consumed with God. They never get offended. They never gossip. They never backbite. They never have strife. Where, <laughs> Where are they? They're in heaven right now. <laughs> Amen. It's, say, Pastor Mike's talking about me. I take it by faith. Amen. It's time to grow up. It says, for... All of creation is waiting. It's waiting. It's waiting. Look there in 1 Corinthians 13. I, I know you're very familiar with it. We'll see how far we can get this morning on this subject. Oh, I want to grow up. 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 I can step into it. Verse 11, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 is so powerful. And we could go through the whole chapter. But I want to I I I take 
a look there in verse in verse nine for we know in part and we prophesy in part when when that which is perfect is come now the word perfect there means mature see when it says be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect that means mature i'm so glad daddy god is mature just think if he wasn't mature with all that power with all that authority whoo he'd be in big trouble you ever see a child with authority and power they're scary that's what we got right now the politicians are not spiritually mature that's why they're wrecking such havoc they're destroying the very fiber of our nation because they're not mature they're not mature but I got to be mature I ain't gonna walk around and talk about she's a baby he's a baby they're a baby no no I say Lord I don't want to be a baby no notice what it says here when and it says for, but when that which is mature, perfect is come, that means maturity, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, hello, when we all first got born again, we were babies. It says that desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Well, how long are you going to be a baby? How long are you going to suck your thumb and fill your diaper? How long are you going to feel sorry for yourself and say you're nothing but a victim? How long? How long? How long are you going to play in the sandbox of life and waste your time on vain foolish ridiculous mickey mouse stuff that's never going to get a soul saved how long how long are you going to be out there I, I, you know what my children i never forbade them to play when they were little you you expect children to play when they're little they're going to play they're going to fall down they're going to get hurt they're trying to walk they're learning but listen if i if my 30 year two year old son if i came out the other day and he was sitting in a sandbox and he's got little gi joe figures and a little car he's going and i say son get up out of the sand get out of the dirt you know and he's out there with a big old diaper on i said son get out of the dirt come on come on it's time to get out of the dirt it's time to get up. How many know that kids love to play in dirt? How many know that we're seated in heavenly places? Why in the world are we playing in the dirt? Why are we playing with stuff that's going to perish? Why, you know, everything came from the earth. Why are we still, why do we got preachers encouraging people to play with Mickey Mouse stupid toys that is not going to get anybody saved, anybody healed, anybody delivered, anybody set free? Why? Because they're still babies. If they weren't babies, they'd put away childish things. When I was a child, I speak as a child. Gaga goo goo. Me, 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 me. You hurt me. You did me wrong. Nobody loves me. You know, a little child, it's all about them. They will cry and cry and cry until you give them attention. And you know what? If you were good parents, you'd give them the attention they need sometime, and it's not in a way they want. In Hebrews chapter 12 and chapter 13, it, it says literally that if God, if God does not correct you, see, I'm not ever asking God to lovey, lovey, dovey on me. I'm saying, oh God, please take me over, over your lap and whip me a good one. This ain't good. I'm acting like a baby. I don't want to be a baby. Tell somebody, I don't want to be a baby. And don't call anybody a baby. Don't go around calling people babies. But just recognize your immaturity. I have a long way to go. Pastor, how old are you in the spirit? I don't know, but I don't know if I want to see. See, look what he goes on to say here. He says, I speak as a child. So when you're a child, you really, you're, 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 you won't understand life and death is in the power of the tongue. You won't understand that you're going to eat the fruit thereof. You don't understand that, that your tongue is the rudder of your boat, that whatever you say, you are opening a door either for God or for demonic powers. That by your mouth. But see, the thing is, it's in your heart. That's why he first talks about the mouth, because the mouth gives you away. You know, them that are earthly talk of earthly things. Them that are heavenly talk of heavenly things. Go back and look at the life of Christ because he was the brightness of the glory, the express image of the Father. He's my example of what a mature son is. Even at 12 years old, what did Jesus talk about? Now, let's, let's, I'm just going to get to the nitty gritty because this is a message for those who were children, but now they have become men. He talked about, Jesus did not talk about worldly things. He talked about heavenly things, spiritual things. He talked because that's where he lived. He lived in the realm of his father. 
He never boasted and bragged about disease, famine, sickness, death. He never, he never, he never, he never talked about the Roman Empire which had invaded their nation. Never did. Never did. Never talked about houses. Hey, except for the fact, he says, if you, if those who have forsaken everything and followed me, you'll have a hundredfold in this life. And it doesn't mean you're going to own a hundred houses. I've experienced it. Because when I gave up everything, and I really didn't give up anything because I didn't have anything, but when I've gone to other nations, I've got places right now where the people that I led to the Lord, the people I ministered, the people I know, everything is theirs, and I don't have to pay for it. Pastor Mike could leave here today, get on the plane, and I would be taking care of the rest of my life if I would go to different countries. They have a place for me right now. They have a bed for me to lay in. They got food they will prepare for me. They will take care of me, but I'm not motivated by that. But I've got homes all over. How many of you would probably take me in if I needed a place to go? Let me see your hands. Okay, keep them up, keep them up. Okay. <laughs> sure you would. And when you got tired of me, I'd go somewhere else's house. But I'm just telling you that I speak as a child. So how do you know I'm a spiritual mature person? Yeah, let's listen what comes out of your mouth. But when you discover you're not mature, listen, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child. Now, understanding, and there's a difference between understanding and thinking. Understanding, people just don't see things the way you see them. You cannot convince a child to think like an adult. You can't make them. You try to make a child until something happens in their heart and they grow up. You might as well talk to your blue in the face to tell a five-year-old little child, act like a man. What? Act like a man. Stop talking goo-goo-gaga. Stop speaking foolish stuff. Stop talking about sports and the weather and about what the world is doing and about politics. Stop talking. I'm a mature adult. Yeah, how much do you talk about Jesus? You know, your maturity is revealed to the extent that you exalt Christ. I'm telling you right now, you first got to acknowledge, I need to grow up. You got to find your problem before you can be delivered from your problem. You, you, don't be, a, and, and it, it, there's so much here. Look, at, he says, I thought as a child. Now, the word thought really in the Greek, it means you had a vision. You had a plan. You had a purpose. You had a pursuit like a child. Your pursuits were not divine. Your goal was not heavenly. All you could think about was like Esau, the here and now. You couldn't look into the future. How many know adults look into the future? Do you know why they don't put little children behind steering wheels? Do you know why? Because their attention span is three seconds. Listen, do you know that even unconverted men in the day of Christ were way more spiritually inclined than the majority of the people in the church today? I'll give an example. Jesus taught for three days straight, nonstop, and there's people who can't even sit and listen to the word for 15 minutes. See, a, a, a mind that's undisciplined can't focus. It can't zero in. I'm just, sharing, I'm just sharing truths with you because it's time for us to recognize I need to grow up. How many know that God will give you the desires of your heart? Yeah. Man, I want to grow up. Yeah. I want to be like my big brother. I want to be like Jesus in word and thought and deed and action and response. I want, I want to get to the place to where no matter what anybody says to me, all that comes out of me is love. No matter how you slice, dice, cut, chop me up, nothing but love comes out. Hello? Isn't that what we want? We got to because there's a lost generation. Not one generation. We got three generations right now that are utterly lost to the realities of Christ. We got preachers in the pulpit speaking such filth and garbage and carnality and immorality. And people who think they're mature says, oh, they're awesome preachers. And I'm going, that's not what Jesus said. That's not how Jesus lived. That's not what Jesus proclaimed. Help us, Lord. Say, help me, Jesus. So look at, I understood as a child, but when I became 
A man I put away childless things. Now, how do we become man? When faith, hope, and love is working and you're abiding. If you will abide in faith, hope, and love, you will put away childless things. We're not taking away your toys. I'm not here to take away your toy. I'm not here to take this stupid one-eyed monster out of your house, though I wish you would. I'm not here to get you to stop wasting your time on things that ain't going to have no eternal value. No, just look at it. If you're mature, all you're going to do is you're going to look at what you're involved in, what you're investing in, what you're doing, and ask yourself, does that have eternal value? Can God use this for him? Now, you can take things. It doesn't say you shouldn't work. If a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. Can I use this for God? Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, not unto man, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. And you know the good news is, and you say, Pastor Mike, why would the Lord release you to begin to teach some, some, some things? Because I'm not just speaking to those who are here anymore. I'm speaking into 14 million homes. I'm speaking to some people who are mature, who do want to be mature, who do want to grow up. This couple from Wichita, Kansas, they were crying. They said, we don't have the money right now, Pastor Mike, but if we could, if we could, we, we'd find any way to get out there. We, we, we got to sit underneath this type of teaching. We got to hear this because this is setting us free. I believe that there will be literally, literally thousands that are going to wake up and they will begin to come from the north, the south, and the east, and the west, and they will get fed, and they will be nourished, and they will be matured, and they will go out of here, and they will take the word with them. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. And let me tell you right now, there is no way in the natural this network can even keep up for one more month if God does not supernaturally come through for us. And so I just say, Lord, you do it. You speak to the hearts right now. There are right now, God is speaking to hearts out there right now, and he's going to have you. I'm telling you, I do not doubt one bit that God is going to have some of those that are watching this program. And you've been saying, uh, when we first went on, we had a family contacted us, and they said, we've looked and we've looked. Don't think I have some deep revelation. All I have is the word. If it's not in the word, it's too deep for me. I, all I got is the word of God. That's all I've got. Nothing else is nothing but the word of God in the spirit. Look there in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20. It's right there. Look at what it says here. Brethren, brethren, he's talking to believers. Be not children in understanding. Verse 20, verse, chapter 14. Brethren, be not children in understanding. Me, 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 me. I, 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 I. Stop being children. You know, children are always fussing and fighting. Always fussing and fighting. I can prove it to you. Look, keep your finger here and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Just, just jump over there, man. Jump over there and jump in. Listen to this. Listen to this, man. I want to help you grow up. I want to help you. Tell somebody, Pastor Mike wants, me, wants to help me grow up. I'm already growing up. Oh, you're the biggest baby around. I don't grow, I'm not saying I'm grown up. By God's grace, I'm going to grow up. Notice what it says here. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. How come we can't people speak to people spiritually? Because they get offended, they get upset, they take their baseball, and they take their bat, and they take their gloves, and they go home. I want a deeper revelation in the nature of Christ. You, there's no deeper revelation in the nature of Christ. Man in the garden didn't have houses. He didn't even have land. He didn't have cars. He didn't have airplanes. He didn't have jewelry. All that man, he didn't even have clothes. All he had was a relationship with God. That's all man had. And he was perfect in all of his ways. Hello? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? All you need in him we live and move and have our being. I came into this world with nothing. I'll leave with nothing. If you be risen with Christ, seek those things. Mature people seek those things that are above. Where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now listen, this is where most believers are at. Can you imagine? Here you got a big old driver's seat and you got a steering wheel. You got two men sitting in the driver's seat. They both got their hands on their steering wheel. 
They're both trying to control the stealing, steering, and they're both trying to control the pedals and the gas. And they're headed down the highway. You're right behind them. What do you think you're going to see? You got two people who actually hate each other. They despise each other. Let's, let's, let's say a husband and a wife, they have never got along. What are we going to have? We're going to have an accident. Stop. Go. Now imagine two men, let's say two men in the driver's seat. The flesh and the spirit. The flesh and the spirit. So you cannot do the things that you would. Sometimes the flesh gets more of a control of the steering wheel and guess where the flesh is taking you? Where you don't want to go. Sometimes the spirit gets a hold of the steering wheel and whoa, I've got joy, I've got peace, I've got love, I've got life, I've got victory, whoa! But then the flesh comes along and puts his steering hand because you let him back on when what we need to do is you need to slay the flesh. And that's what faith is for. By the spirit, you mortify the flesh. And now we got preachers saying, it don't matter if the flesh and the spirit control the same steering wheel. Get out of here. Get out of here. You'll never do the will of God. You've got to die to the flesh. Listen, how do you know if a man's dead to the flesh? Watches don't mean nothing. Money doesn't mean nothing. The praises of men don't mean nothing. How do you know that, Pastor Mike? Look at Jesus. Does that mean you won't wear a watch? Oh, yeah, you'll wear a watch. It won't mean nothing. Paul said, I've learned both to be how to base and how to abound. I learned how to be full and I can be hungry. It doesn't mean anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am telling you, we have absolute bizarre stuff being preached today. When we ought to be taking people into the very, we ought to be taking people into the harvest field. We ought to be taking people into the very heart of God. Do you believe one soul is worth more than all the wealth of this world? Yeah. Do you believe that? Then why don't you take the wealth God has given to you, the early church did, and pour it into one soul who's worth more than all the earthly things you could ever get? says be be not be not children and under and be not children and understanding so let's read here a little bit further he said i have fed you with milk he says he says and brethren i could not speak unto you as unto spiritual but as unto carnal even as unto babes in christ are there babes in christ yes are they in christ yes listen to this i have fed you with milk and not with meat for hitherto you were not able to bear it now they're yet now are you able how do you know for you are yet carnal. How do you know I'm carnal? For where is there is among you and being strife, divisions? Are you not carnal? And walk as men. The Greek says walk like mere flesh and blood people. That's what the world does. I'm mad at you. I'm upset at you. You hurt me. See, I can't stop people getting in strife. Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion, every evil work. How can out of the same fountain flow both sweet water and bitter? How can a fig tree pr produce olives or, or a vine fig? So can no fountain produce. So you got two men living there. One of them's got to die. And people are dying to the good man. And they're becoming alive to the, to the nasty man. I want to become sweeter. I want to become nice. That doesn't mean my preaching is going to be tickling your eel, ear and tongue. Oh, you're so precious. Goo, 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 goo. You're so valuable. Oh, you're such a lovely man. Do, 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 do. <laughs> you know what a grown up would say? Stop that. Don't you be tickling my ears. I mean, I have a guy. People do this to me. See, and they, they, I know what they're doing. They're trying to demean me. And Paul said to Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. And so I've got men who will, hey, Mikey, I'll get in the face, not angry. I said, I'm not Mikey. What? I said, I am not Mikey. I said, I don't give you a name that makes you feel immature or inferior. Don't you give me a name. My name is Mike or Michael. Oh, okay, okay. Mature adults don't want to be cuddled and hugged, and tickled, and made to feel good. They want to be mature people, 
Come on, how many ever work? Listen, I, I, I worked in a rough and tumble world. They got, a, they got a TV show called The Most Dangerous Catch. Let me tell you, I was out on that, and I had a captain that knew what he was doing. And that old Saudi captain, he didn't say, now, Mike, please do this. Please do this. He said, Mike, go do this. I said, yes, captain. Well, he talked rough to me. I'm glad he did, because otherwise I'd have been dead. You're out in the battlefield. I want a sergeant that won't bark at me. What are you talking about? How many would rather have a sergeant that barks at you than someone who just speaks real low and sweet and nice? I think you should get your head down. There's a sniper in the hill over there. Whack! Get your head down! He's going to take your head off. Well, we're not really in a battle, Pastor Mike. Oh, we're not? This isn't war? This is war! Say, this is war. He says, ah, you are kind of, for where is there is envy and strife? Oh, go back there to 1 Corinthians. Go back there to chapter 14, and we'll move on. You all want to move on yet? Okay, so progressively as we're moving on, I'm assuming you're laying aside your toys. Just took the thumb out of your mouth, right? Some of you came in here this morning with your thumb in your mouth. How many took your thumb out of your mouth? Well, it's about two-thirds out, Pastor Mike. <laughs> Do you ever suck your thumb, Pastor Mike? I'm not the discussion. <laughs> Look here in verse 20. Brethren, be not children of understanding. How bait in malice be ye children. Now, I love this. The word malice in, in the King James is, does not. But it literally means keep the innocence of children. So we keep the innocence of a child. You know, a little child, they're so innocent. Don't you love little children? Of course, a lot of children today, they are mean and nasty because mom and dad's using the TV and they set them down in front of it. And they're destroying their innocence. I mean, they're destroying their innocence. They're not, they don't have sweet, innocent, kind, gentle. You, you know, I was amazed. And let me share this story real quick. I've gone to third world countries, and you would not believe it. When I was in the Philippines, I stayed in many homes. Listen, you cannot believe the difference between children in some of these third world nations come to American kids. Listen, I was, I stay, and I've been over there five times. I stayed in many homes. I'm telling you the honest to God truth. I never heard a Filipino parent, mom or dad, ever raise their voice to their children. Not one. Out of f going there five different times, living in many homes up to three weeks at a time. They never raised their voice. I never seen them slap them, hit them. I never seen them get mad at them. I seen them get them up in the morning. I seen them put to bed at night. I seen them at anything. And at the table, they all ate normal. And they weren't barking at them. They weren't yelling at them. And I said, Lord, this is almost supernatural. How can these kids, they're so obedient, they're so sweet, they're so nice, they're so kind. How could they be that way? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, they haven't corrupted their mind with vain amusements. They haven't corrupted their minds. When my children were real little, my wife and I fed them stories of great Christians, and we fed them nothing but Bible. And I'm telling you what, man, I hardly had to ever discipline Michael or Daniel. And then we got into Odyssey. We got into Christian entertainment, which corrupted them. Christian entertainment corrupted them. Backbiting. I mean, they didn't even know that stuff. But it says, be not children and be, be children. Uh, be, uh, look, once again, it says, it says, be not children in, in understanding how bait in malice be in children. For in other words, keep that tender heart for such is the kingdom of God. But in understanding be what? In understanding, be what? Be man. Be man in your understanding of what we're here for. The call and the purposes and the commission and the vision. Listen, whether you believe me or not, you will die. You will stand before God. You will give an account of all the time he gave you on planet earth and what you did with it. You will. So you might as well wake up, get up out of bed, and realize right now, this is very serious. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. It's time to grow up. You got to ask God, Lord, help me grow up. Help me grow. Oh, but I can't act right, Pastor Mike. That's why you need Jesus. I can't do right. That's why you need Jesus. That's why you got to get your eyes on Jesus. That's why we've got the word that we might be sanctified, purged, purified, and cleansed. Now, don't look at anybody else. If other people want to act like big babies, I'm telling you, you know this very well. In the last two months, 
there's been so much nitpicking and, and backbiting and gossiping that's been going through this congregation, but I haven't got into it. I said, I'm not getting into it. People say, Pastor Mike, you know, people are just, they don't like each other. They won't talk to each other. They, they just, they, I said, I know it. I, said, I got a congregation that's pooping their pants. But you don't have to be a child in understanding. Pastor Mike, you better watch where you walk because you might step into it. I know. Just help me grow up. Hello. <laughs> Pastor Mike, after this, you won't have nobody left. Oh, yeah, I've got 14,000 million you have not yet met. Woo! Whew, man, ain't that exciting. Aren't you all excited us reaching people? Look there in Galatians. Now, this, uh, we, we, this is so powerful. Say, I can handle meat. Now, get ready, Tracy. God is about to take you into a place of authority and dominion if you're willing to grow up, not be offended. Are you ready to grow up? Oh, man, you'll catch up to Pat. Okay. Look what it says here in chapter 4 of Galatians. Now I say that the heir, say heir, as long as he is a child, as long as he is a baby, as long as he is a baby where there's envy and strife, and actually that's what it says. It says, take heed lest you devour one another in Galatians chapter 5. The works of the flesh, the works of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, differeth nothing from a... Now, the word servant in the, in the King James is not a good word. It literally means slave. And the slave he's talking about is being a slave to the elements of this world. Look there, and we'll jump back, verse 3. Even so, we, when we were babies, were in bondage under the elements of the world. And actually, the Greek says, under the, the elemental spirits of this age. That's what it says in the Greek. So when you were babies, demonic powers could manipulate you, control you, and direct your life. When you were babies, how many mature have you, have you truly met Pastor Mike? Not very many. And I'm not including myself in that maturity level. Not very many, Pauls, Peters, Johns, James. Not very many. I've met a lot of people who think, well, we're rich, we're full, we have need of nothing. And you know not that you're miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Have you ever met a kid who thought he was growing up? All the time. I remember one day I come home and Stephanie and Stephen, they wanted to grow up so bad that I went into our bedroom and here they were. They had gotten into our closet and Stephanie had mommy's shoes on, her high heel shoes on, and she had mommy's hat on and Stephen had daddy's shoes on and they were so proud. They're walking around thumping, trying to hold up. <laughs> we're growing up. We're mature. We didn't have videos in those days. It was funny. It was hilarious. I think God laughs sometimes. I said, yeah, look at that Mike Yeager. He thinks he's so mature. But he just filled his diaper and sucked his thumb. I said, oh, Father, don't let me be deceived. Let me, listen, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own self. Do the word. I've said this for almost 30 years in this congregation. When we're worshiping God, the Bible says, lifting holy hands. I don't need to lift holy We got preachers that we've had here during worship, and they're like this during worship. Like this. We had a preacher here just a couple weeks ago. He's like this through the whole service, not judging his heart. But David danced before the Lord with all of his might. He got up here. And then he began to basically reprove the congregation for not worshiping God with all their heart. Yeah! Yeah, and this is a well-known preacher who was just up in Hagerstown. Whoa, wow, I'm, I'm not judging his heart. I'm say, well, come on. If I'm going to teach, if I'm going to say worship God, then I better worship God. Listen, my dad used to say, he used to, and it was so full of lies, because I, I, he said, do what I tell you to do. Don't do what I do. How many know that didn't fly? My dad was an alcoholic. I became an alcoholic. My dad beat my mom. If I wouldn't have got saved, I would have beat my wife. My dad, I mean, he smoked heavy. I became a heavy smoker. 
You can't tell people to do something. You've got to show them how to do it. Show people how to love. Show people how to forgive. Show people how to pray. If I'm going to tell the people to come out here, and let me tell you right now, guys, I'm laying, I'm laying, I'm laying the spiritual law down. You stand in the pulpit, you better be givers, you better pray, you better be in the word, or you're coming out of the pulpit. Amen. You better not be spreading strife, you better not be gossiping, you better get serious, or I don't want you in the pulpit. Amen. Amen. You just better do it. Because it's time to put away childish things. Do we have any men and women here this morning? Who, 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 who? Come on, God's going to bring some grown-ups here. I think there's people who have purposely stopped going to the house of God because they're fed up with the games. They're fed up with the deceptions. They're fed up with the Mickey Mouse, thumb-sucking, diaper-filling rituals. Listen, I think it's wonderful, ladies. You're waving a flag, but that don't make you spiritual. You know what? I think it's wonderful, brother. You can run and you can jump, but when you come down, you better be walking straight. <laughs> now I say that the heir, as long as he is a baby, he's different nothing from a slave, though, this is amazing, though he be Lord of all. Did you know that when you got born again, everything that God has became yours? It is all yours. Keep your finger here. Look there in 1 Corinthians 3.21. Man, everything God has is mine. All authority, all power, all dominion, all wisdom, all righteousness, all faith, all love, all hope. All that God has is mine. It's all mine. Say, it's all mine. You, it became yours the minute you say, Jesus, I repent. I surrender my heart. Come into my life. Oh, Lord, I'm yours. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Say, everything is mine. Look at what it says here in verse 21. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Now, let's back up a little bit. Because this is so powerful. Go there to verse 16. Knowing, know ye that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So notice what God is dealing with. He's dealing with your body. He's dealing with your mind. He's dealing with your emotions. How many know that when you raise children, it's not the clothes you put on them. It's not the toys you give them. It's not the house they live in. It is their mind. That's where you got to be transformed. Be not children in understanding in your mind. Listen to what it goes on to say here. It says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive who? Himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, yeah, I'm Become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Making money is foolishness with God. Don't miss that and say, I mean, God calls you to prosper. Houses and land, influence, political positions to God. He says that's all foolishness to him. That's what he says. It's foolish. For that which is wise with man is foolishness to God. This is the Bible. Say the Bible. He says, and remember now, he's teaching this to babes. Pastor Mike, this is too strong. Remember, he just got done saying, I want to feed you meat. I can't because you're babes. But even what he gave in those days to babes is too strong for us. Oh, that says a lot. Remember now, he's, not ta he's talking to carnal Christians. He's giving what I'm sharing with you with carnal Christians. So if we're below carnal Christians, we're in big trouble, aren't we? He's sharing this with babes. Oh, Pastor Mike preached a message this morning that just made me feel so bad. I'll never go back there again. You're not even a babe. <laughs> let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool. I know stuff. You're a fool. That he may be wise, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And people are always manipulating, conniving. I had to deal with some of this morning. 
I literally, this week, I had to show people, some people the door. They came here with alternative motives, and I say, love you, goodbye, you're a tempest in a teapot. What does that mean? God will show you. Can't have this here. Where there's envy and strife, there's confusion, every evil work. You could repent. But I didn't sense at that moment any repentance. But how many know that there's times you wouldn't repent, but later on you did? The prodigal son, he was a baby. He took all of his father's inheritance and he blew it. He blew it. But then he woke up and he became mature. And he said, I've sinned against my father and I've sinned against heaven. And I will go back and I will be his slave. And the father met him with open arms. Aren't you glad that God will meet you with open arms? Verse 20, look at what this. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Do not glory in men. Did you know before this, look there in chapter 3 and verse 4. For while one saith, I am a Paul, and on another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Do you know what? If you walk out of here and you talk about how awesome and great Pastor Mike is, you are one carnal person. You're talking about how great, you know, I don't care, Kenneth Copeland, Fred Price, Joyce Myers. How come you're not talking about Jesus? How come I'm not reading on Facebook and I don't read it, most of it? How come I'm not hearing people brag about Jesus? They're bragging about preachers. What is wrong with you? Bragging about preachers. Are you not carnal? How come you're not lifting up Jesus? How come you're, if I lift up Fred Price, he'll draw men unto God. No, he won't. Because Fred Price ain't the answer. Mike Yeager's not the answer. Many times we are the problem. Whew. Man, you know, I just, for years and years and years, I said, I got to zip the lip. I got to zip the lip. I got to zip the lip. I don't want to attack people. I don't want to demean people. But this is such insanity. Don't they see this flies in the face of God's word? That winning we are breaking. And you turn on the TV and they got these elaborate uh, openings and closings of the man of God in his white suit. And how he is so majestic. Get out of here. There ain't nobody majestic but Jesus Christ. There's nobody to be exalted but Christ Jesus. No lift up man. We don't glory in man. We glory in Christ. And when men, Smith Wigglesworth died of a broken heart, three days before he died, he heard people talking about him, and he wept, and he said, Oh, God, I failed you. I failed you. He said, They're talking about me. They're gonna, you're going to have to take me home. Three days later, he was in a vestibule of a church at a funeral. He's standing there, and all of a sudden, it's like he took off his coat, and he was gone. How many people are gathering to conferences because they're really learning about Jesus or because a well-known speaker with all their fancy equipment and fancy lighting and fancy... I'm not attacking people. Listen, I, I'm, not, I'm pulling the beam out of my own eyes. I'm saying, I want Jesus, man. And if that preacher can help me to become like Jesus, I'm good to go. If that meeting can help me become more like Jesus, I'm good to go. If the Spirit of God is in that service, I'm good to go. But I'm not going there to see a man. When I went to Rainbow Bible Training, I didn't go to see Brother Hagen. I went because I wanted to be more like God. I wanted to be a vessel meet for the Master. who's prepared every good work. And if I go to a meeting and they, they, and they don't bring conviction and they don't prune me and they don't chastise me and they don't purge me and they don't cleanse me to where I'm a vessel meet for the Master's use, I want nothing to do with it. I can't go to nothing but just a big old worship service. I want the word to come and plow deep. I want the sword of the Spirit to cut me up. I want the truth that will set me free from the things of this age. This age is passing away. I'm just a pilgrim. This ain't my home. If you could see in the realm of the spirit, I don't have no suitcases. I don't have a U-Haul truck behind me. I'm just, uh, I'm just out of here. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> Pastor, this is too strong. It was talking to babes. If this is a message to babes, then what are we? Say help. <laughs> Look what it says here. For the, it, says, it says, therefore let no man glory in man. Why? Because everything is yours. Oh yeah, he thinks he's hot shot. He thinks he's hot stuff, but everything is mine. 
Listen, these men ain't got something more that you don't. It's yours too. How did they get it? By faith. Pastor Mike has nothing that you can't have. Because everything is yours. Every, look what it says here then. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cepheus, that's Peter, or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. All the wealth is yours. Everything, shout, everything is mine. Everything is mine. Everything is mine. But notice what it then says. And ye are Christ. I'm his. See, if you don't have that, you're in trouble. You can't have the revelation that everything is yours without you knowing you belong to Christ. And Christ belongs to God. Well, let's close up. Go back there to Galatians, please, chapter 4. <laughs> Don't you love it? Don't you love it? Isn't it wonderful? Amen. How come you're happy, Pastor Mike? Because the Lord told me, he said, it's time, it's time to start acting like a man. Amen. Preach like a man, act like a man, talk like a man, live like a man. It's time, Mike. Come on. Come on. You get in the playpen and then you get out. And then you get in the playpen and you get out. I did it for many years. I mean, I'm walking with God. Next thing you know, I got to have a snowmobile. I got to have an ATV. I got to have a boat. I got to have a paraplane. I got to have this. I got to have that. I, and, then, and then I'd get rid of them. God would convict me because I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But who's got time for that stuff? And I'd get rid of it and give the money to the Lord. And then I'd turn. And then got to watch this new movie. Got to see this new fango dango machine. Got to do this. Got to do this. And then here, it was probably over four years ago. We have a motorcycle. It don't mean nothing. I, I, I'd give it away if my wife would let me. It don't mean nothing. I'm not picking on my wife. There ain't nothing wrong with the motorcycle, but I mean, they don't mean nothing. You understand what I'm saying? And, and, and so everything I have, as far as I know right now, everything I have, I'm trying to use it for God's glory. Every penny, every dollar, every cent that comes through, I'm no longer saying, what does Mike Yeager want? My kids, you ask them, Dad, what do you want for, birthday, for your birthday? Nothing. What do you want for Christmas? Nothing. Well, I just, I guess, get me some underwear. Maybe some undershirts. I don't need nothing but Jesus. Would you like to get a paycheck, Pastor Mike? No, I just get, you know what? I used to get a paycheck from the church. I would sign my name and hand it right back to them. And they would be so mad at me for giving back a paycheck. Why would they do that? Because they thought they could control me with money. The only one I want to control me is Jesus Christ. Say, so Pastor Mike, you have lost it. Wonderful. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, did for nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors, governors, and to the time appointed of the father, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of this world. When you are a baby, even though all things are yours, you will be controlled by how you feel, how it looks, how it seems, what people say, what people do, what people help, what, you know, by the politics, by the economy, by the weather, you'll be controlled. Do you know Jesus was not even controlled by the weather? Whoa, he's in the boat, man. They're sinking, he's sleeping. They wake him up, said, Jesus, don't you care we perish? He stands up and says, wind, be still, waves, cease. Why would the elements obey Jesus like that? I'll tell you why. Because he was not a baby. Well, this is a revelation here. If you understand this, it doesn't matter if everything is yours. If you're not mature, if you do not crucify your flesh, if you do not submit to the lordship of God, sickness and disease, demons, even the weather will laugh at you. I've been around bossy kids. They try to boss you around. You laugh at them. Demons laugh at you if you don't submit to the lordship of Christ. You got you got to you got to grow up, man. And then when you tell the sickness to go, it will go. Well, what if I don't feel like it left? What if I still got the pain? What if I still Well, you know that you know it had to go. It don't matter how it looks. Whew. 
Actually, I'm just trying to kind of prep you a little bit for tonight. You know, like when they're going to have an operation, they kind of prep you. We're prepping you for the operating table. Amen. Amen. Listen, what it goes on here. And because you're a son, it says to read, it says, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, a slave, but a son. And, and that word son in the Greek means we also mature son, for as many as are led by the spirit of God in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, they are mature sons. I don't know why God don't lead me, because... He tells you to do something and you won't listen anyway. I'm telling you right now, God told thousands of people to gather together in the house of God and they didn't obey this morning. Why didn't they go? Didn't feel like it. But I'm excited. Because God's going to raise up a bunch of mature sons. Say, wave your hand and say, he's talking about me. Ooh, talking about us. I like that. Wherefore thou art no more servant but a son of a son and heir of God. How bait when you knew not God, did notice, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which are nature are no gods, or when you when you know God, you will not let the circumstances control you. And when you know God, people think they know God. Remember, it says, Oh Lord, we cast out devils, we healed the sick, we raised the dead. No, they didn't deal with their heart. He'll say, Depart from me, workers of Maniki, I never knew you. I never knew you. You never knew me. You thought you knew me. You used my name just like somebody can misuse somebody else's name. Look what it says here. But now after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, these were people who knew God. These were people who began in the spirit. These were people who had walked with the Lord. But now they allowed the Judaizers to come in and teach feast days, holy days, new moon days. You know how much trash is being taught in the pulpit today? I don't mind teaching the types and the shadows of the old covenant, but there's people who are keeping these days. They're keeping the days of the old covenant. What for? They're dressing like them. It is insanity, and they have no power. They have no dominion. That's why we don't have signs and wonders. I'm not talking about a few people getting, getting healed, a few people getting touched. I'm talking about a radical move where God comes in, and masses of people are completely healed, completely delivered, completely set free. And it's not even their faith. It's the faith of of the one. Now, there are people because they took a hold of Christ by faith, but you know what? He mentioned those people. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith. But you know what? The majority of those people just had a little bitty itty amount of faith to get them to Jesus. And when they got, listen, in the early church, people who weren't even Christians laid their family members out on the streets to where the shadow of Peter, when he passed by, they would get healed. Why? Because Peter had become a mature adult, and now he could exercise all of his rights, all of his privileges, and all of his authorities. It's about time that Pastor Mike begins to exercise my legal adult right to tell the devil to shut up and come out, and he'll have to go. Oh, it's about time. Enough's enough. Smith Wigglesworth would go in and clean out mental institutions. Schools of the blind, they'd have to shut them down. He'd line up all the blind people. He'd say, open your eyes, open your eyes. He'd go down and every blind person would see. How could Smith do that? Because he was operating as a mature son of God where all things were his. Didn't need to have worship teams to follow them around and special colored lightings and I'm not against worship. Please don't misunderstand me. People misunderstood me. I'm not against worship. But I want to see some mature sons and daughters. All of creation is waiting for us to grow up. And it says, but that after you have known God, or rather known God, how turn you again to the waking vaguely elements, wherein to you desire again to be in bondage? Well, we got a generation that's been nothing but bondage. We got a church for the last three generations. All they've known is bondage. All they've known, all they've known is, is, is a lot of it, a lot of this goes way back to false teaching. I am so glad when I got born again, 
I picked up my Bible and I just started reading about Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I discovered he healed them all. And by his stripes I was healed. So just as a baby Christian, I had physical afflictions in my body. And I said, I have authority over this sickness. This isn't of God. It can't dwell in me. And so, when you first get born again, how many ever notice that it seems like your prayers, the answers to your prayers manifest much faster? Have you ever experienced that? Anybody ever experienced that? Man, like, before you could ever pray, boom. But as you go along, it seems like there's a delay. Why would God seem to delay your healing? Because now he wants you to be a, grow up. That even though you can't see it, though you can't feel it, you still know he can't lie. You know he can't lie. So, as we get into the subject of faith, see, I am not teaching, when I'm going to be teaching on the subject, listen, I am not talking about somebody's revelation in somebody else's book. I can only share with you what I have experienced, what I have known of the word of life, what I have experienced. Experience never takes the, knowledge never takes the place of experience. I'd rather walk with a man a few words who knows than somebody who's just full of hot air and even can quote tons of scriptures. I'm not going to be sharing what I don't know. God is about to raise up some mature sons and daughters. And do you know what? He can make you grow up just like that. How could God make? He did it to Adam. When he raised Adam from the, from the dirt, he breathed into him. Adam didn't go through the first Second, third, fourth, fifth, twelfth grade of Holy Ghost. He got it all in one split second. Hoo-hoo. You know, these guys who said they went to heaven and they got schools where you're sitting being taught. You know, I believed that lie for a while. One day the Lord brought, he said, well, don't you believe my book? I said, what? He said, when you see me, you will be like me, for you will know me even as I am. There is no school in heaven. You will be just like the Father, and you will know God the same way God knows you. If that don't get you excited, but I got to wait. Did you get something this morning? Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Okay. I was not trying to offend you. I was not trying to demean you. We can have a prayer line this morning of hurt feelings if you want to. We can pray for your hurt feelings. We can pray for your little sukis that got bruised and damaged because of Pastor Mike's preaching. <laughs> but come on, Mom and Dad. Come on, man. You put your foot down one day with your children. And you said, grow up. Grow up. It's not that you don't love them, you don't care about them, because you said, grow up. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is telling us right now, it's time to grow up. It's time. Speak not even one of another, brethren. For he that speaketh evil is brother, speaketh evil the law, and judges the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. Who art thou that judges another? God is able to save them. So I'm not, I wasn't speaking evil of these ministers. You may think I was. I'm not. I'm just warning you like Paul did. When, when Jesus did about the Pharisees and the scribes, he said, don't be like these guys who talk it, but don't do it. I'm saying, don't put Pastor Mike on a pedestal, because Pastor Mike can fall. But put Jesus on a pedestal. Lift Jesus up. Whew. Don't study Mike Yeager's life. Study Jesus. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy for you. 
I'm so happy for you because I gave you truth that will cut away the flesh. And you won't have to go down all these rabbit trails and these dead end alleys. You don't have to go that way. You don't have to get sucked in by those who are preaching covetousness and the things of this world. You can go right to the heart of the Father and you can be just like Jesus. No chastisement for the, pre for the moment seems pleasant, but it beareth the wonderful fruit of repentance. Say, I repent, Lord. I'll throw my hands up if you do. I repent, Lord. I repent, Lord. There's a song we sing, I'm sorry, Lord, for making it what it's not. When it's all about you, it's all about you. Is Stephanie still back there? Could No? Okay, where's Mom. I'd like us to sing that song. I don't even know all the words. One of you guys could bring it up on the computer, right? Who could find that on the computer real quick? Huh? Oh, it's a karaoke program. Okay. Well, it's all about him anyways. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout.